Sasquatch. Blood Beast of Monster Mountain, aka the Legend of McCullough's Mountain, is a pretty strange one. It was released in the mid 70s, but uses archival footage from the film The Legend of Blood Mountain from 1965, which also goes by the name Demon Hunter. Jeez Louise, pick a name already! But you can tell that Blood Beast of Monster Mountain is two movies stitched together. The footage from the 70s acts like a Bigfoot documentary, with the guy going around interviewing people talking about the monster. The footage from the 60s is the actual movie. But is the beast even a Bigfoot? Well, I've watched it all the way through, and I'm still not sure. mentioned that there are two movies here, but in the opening you also get a music video. Some folky song about Sasquatch, and I gotta admit, I kinda like it, and it does set the mood. Some say that he's the Bigfoot, some say he's Sasquatch. Now we have the narrator slash host of the documentary section, Good evening. Don Davison. He tells us all the different locations the beast has been sighted and the different names the locals have given it. Alma, Yeti, Sasquatch, it's all nothing we haven't heard before. To tie it all together, he tells us that Blood Mountain is also said to house these creatures. Locals won't talk to outsiders about it, but they know that they live there. The first eyewitness they talk to is Florence Dooland. She says she's been coming up to the mountain and camping for years, and only recently has something happened. Her and her husband go to the lake to fish, and they see a large hairy creature in the woods. She said it was huge, and more human than animal. The creature just stood there and watched them, and then ran away. When we had gotten out of the camper, we looked over in the woods and saw this huge hairy creature just standing there. Now on to the movie side of this, uh, movie. Bestoink Dooley. What kind of name is Bestoink? Dooley is watching the news and hears a story about Blood Mountain. This intrigues him. He works for a newspaper, but is just an assistant and dreams of becoming the world's greatest reporter. He thinks that this story will be his big break. So he goes to the chief to see if he'll promote him and let him write all about the beast of Blood Mountain. The only thing is, Dooley is a bumbling idiot, and his boss really doesn't like it. Nonetheless, and probably just to get him out of his office, he says that if he wants to do a story, he can, but in his free time. So he's not really a reporter, but Dooley's happy anyway. Do what you want on your own time, but just get out of here and leave me alone. Gee, thanks, Chief. I'm a reporter at last. You won't be sorry. You won't be sorry. Back to the narrator, who interviews more people for their fake Bigfoot stories. I say fake because they're all just your typical, I was in the woods and saw something big story. By the way, is this going to be on television? Back to Dooley, who has a dream that he was the best reporter in the world. Everyone loved him, and he could get anything he wants. Dooley, man of the year. However, back in reality, that is hardly the case. He wakes up in his small apartment, alone, and does his morning stretches. Why is this so important that I need to see it? Well, anyway, Dooley is off to the small town at the base of Blood Mountain. He talks to a local who tells him how to meet a doctor and see the bleeding rocks. And he also warns him to be careful. The mountain has started bleeding again. He tells us that the rocks will literally bleed red blood. And that means the beast will soon come out of its cave to give the mountain a sacrifice. 
Scientists have been studying it for years, but can't come up with an answer as to why it bleeds. Everyone but Dr. Tenson has given up. He has his own theory about the rocks, mainly that it's just rust and water that's inside the rock. When it Dr. gets Tenson, hot, it escapes like it and makes this blood this effect. At least that's bullet. his theory. He How does do send a sample to the lab to get analyzed, though. The narrator then talks about why the scientific community won't accept such a creature, and he says it's just scientific caution. People get upset over anything that disrupts their patterns of our day-to-day -day lives. He also mentions how most scientific research is funded by private investors, and it's rare that anyone will want to finance a monster search. That makes sense, but even so, people are seeing something in the world. Woods. So much so that some governments have made it a felony to kill a Bigfoot, and some towns even have Bigfoot festivals. So, even if science can't prove it, Sasquatch is still celebrated. Back at the doctor's house, Dooley is getting everything wrapped up on his story when Susan, the doctor's housekeeper, chimes in. She says that her grandma saw the creature. And this is just the hook Dooley needs. She says that the monster hastened her grandmother's death, and she described it as a monster straight from the gates of hell. She said it was huge, had arms, legs, and a face that would drive a man crazy. She is interrupted by a phone call, which turns out to be the lab results of the liquid coming from the rocks. And it turns out, it is blood. Seems that our stain is blood after all. What Bigfoot documentary isn't complete without talking about the Theodore Roosevelt story about two trappers that had a run-in with the beast? We've heard it before, and it's nothing new, but it does make a good story. Two guys are out trapping at night, and they see something big in the woods. One guy shoots at it, and it runs away. The next day, they're out there working, and when they come back to camp, it's destroyed. Once again, that night they see something and fire at it. The next morning they decide enough is enough, and they just want to gather up their traps and get out of there. They stick together until around noon when they decide they're being foolish and split up to save time. When one of the trappers comes back to camp, he sees his partner dead. Somewhere in the black mysteriousness of that wilderness stood a hairy giant of a creature that walks on two feet like man. Now for the grand finale. The sheriff calls Dr. Tenson so he can have a look at a body that was recently discovered on the mountain. So now it seems like the legend is true and the beast has awoken to make its sacrifice. Well, the doctor Don't takes arm and Dooley like decides to get out of town. Hands. He's got enough for his story anyway. He takes the doctor's assistant, Ava, back into town to her house, but they never make it. They see something in the middle of the road and swerve to avoid it, crashing into a tree. While Dooley is passed out, Ava is taken by the creature. Sometime later, Dooley's friend, Steve, drives by and wakes him up. He tells Steve his story, and they call the police to hunt down the creature, which really doesn't take that long. Steve fires a couple shots at it, and it drops Ava, but the damage is done, and she's already dead. A bold choice for them to kill off the damsel in distress, but she gets replaced by the doctor's daughter. All the men with guns head out, and Dooley stays back with the doctor's daughter but they hear something right outside the door. So he runs to the truck to try to find something to defend themselves with. And I would say he was quite successful because in the back is a frickin' flamethrower. Flamethrower. Flamethrower? Yeah. Pretty lucky. After a little bit of a chase, he lights the creature on fire and it falls off a cliff. In the end, we are told one final thing about Bigfoot, that to a rational man, there can only be one logical conclusion. 
does exist. Good night. And there you go. That was the Blood Beast of Monster Mountain. Or the Legend of McCullough's Mountain. Or the Legend of Blood Mountain. Whatever you want to call it, that was it. And it seems like the original movie didn't make enough money. So they shot more random scenes, put them in a blender, and this was the result. And the thing is, it's not bad. It's not good either, but I will say it's entertaining for the hardcore movie fans. The 70s footage feels very much like your typical 70s Bigfoot documentary. And the 60s footage is more like a 50s B-movie. Dooley is comic relief, and it's almost like slapstick comedy, but let's talk about Dooley real quick. He's played by George Ellis, who was a late night horror host out of Atlanta in the 60s. After watching this movie, I wish I was alive to see his show. It sounds like it would have been right up my alley with its humor and horror blend. It even earned him a place in the official horror host hall of fame, so good for him. He does a good job in this film and is a likable character. My only gripe is some of the shots run too long and show us nothing that adds to the story. And the creature disappoints. You don't really see anything but the silhouette and it just looked like a hairy dude. Which is because in the original movie it wasn't a Bigfoot at all. It was this creature. And I have to admit that that looks way better than what we got. I would have liked them to go into why the rocks were bleeding human blood and get a little scientific, but that never happened. Now I don't say this lightly, but I think it's due time for a remake of The Legend of Blood Mountain. But this time, leave out the documentary parts and beef up the story a little bit. I give uh, this movie one and a half bleeding rocks out of four. Uh, Chief, uh, Bustoink Dooley would like to see you.